This is the book of Proverbs, chapter 1, verses 24 through 26. Because I have called and ye refused, I have stretched out my hand and no man regarded. But ye have set at naught all my counsel and with none of my reproof. I also will laugh at your calamity. I will mock when your fear cometh. Barakata Yahweh. Barakata Yahweh Shai, Barakata Yahweh, Barakata Yahweh Shai, Barakata Yahweh, Barakata Yahweh Shai, Barakata Yahweh, Barakata Yahweh Shai, Call Hala Yahweh, Bahasham Yahweh Shai, Bahasham Rahaha Kodash. Alright, that's who this world ignorantly and incorrectly calls God, Jesus Christ, and the Holy Spirit in the ancient Paleo Hebrew language. Double honors to the elder apostles of Great Millstone, of whom I learned this 100% truth, and who rule very well and oversees the tabernacle of David. Shout out to the head of the men of Israel camp, the Ak Kazak, whom I teach under here in Greenville, South Carolina. And finally, a quick shout out as well to you, Achyam and Achwath, which is also Hebrew for you, brethren and sisters, who are diligently and sincerely working out your faith in these last days with fear and trembling towards your salvation. All right, y'all, I say Shalom, and that's Hebrew for peace. This is the Ach Alayah, the brother Elijah, and I'm here with a quick exhortation through the spirit and power of Yahweh Hashem Yahushai in these last days for the edification of the elect, all right, and the elect being the chosen Israelites, you know, and you Israelites being the so-called blacks, Hispanics, and Native American Indians. You know, we are the Israelites according to the Bible, and this exhortation is for you. And as you can see by the title of this exhortation, once again being, I will mock when your fear comes. You know, Lord willing, Abaratazah, by the end of this exhortation, you know, the elect are edified. All right, so once again, this is Proverbs chapter 1 and verse 24 on down to verse 26. It says, Because I have called and ye refused, I have stretched out my hand and no man regarded. But ye have said at not all my counsel, and with none of my reproof. I also will laugh at your calamity. I will mock when your fear cometh. You know, and I wanted to reiterate those scriptures once more before I go up early in the chapter to get more context. Um, however, at, the scriptures say exactly what it says. You know, basically the Lord has had wisdom out here for the Israelites, for you so-called blacks, Hispanics, Native American Indians. Yet you guys reject it, you know, yet you guys, you know, turn your, your back to the Lord, you know, and refuse to hearken unto his words. And a lot of y'all might say, well, when did the Lord come and speak with us? When, when did the Lord make known his will towards us? You know, what is this counsel that the Bible is talking about that that we supposedly refuse? You know, well, for those of y'all that are unaware still. You know, this is what this exhortation is for. We're going to jump up early in the chapter and we're going to figure out where the Heavenly Father's voice is and where he's been communicating his will towards his children, his people, the Israelites. Right. So this is up early in the chapter, Proverbs chapter one and verse 20. As you can see by the little heading in the Blue Letter Bible app, it says wisdom warns in the KJV and the NLT. It says wisdom shouts in the streets. All right. So let's figure out. Once again, where the Heavenly Father has been speaking to his people. It's Proverbs chapter 1 and verse 20. And it reads, Wisdom crieth without. She uttereth her voice in the streets. So according to the scriptures, wisdom is speaking to the Israelites in the streets. And not just any random streets, but the, the main chief place of concourse. Where, where many people gather and where they all come together, which is not even literally physically in the streets. You know, that may be where the men of the Lord are set up or where they're teaching at. But through the, the, the power of the Heavenly Father, he's also set up this technology known as the interweb, Internet. I was about to say interweb, which is not wrong, but the Internet, also known as the World Wide Web. You know, where all people can come together, meet up, share things, share ideas, discuss topics, you know, uh... Uh, share music videos, rap songs, albums, you know, share movies. Oh, look, the internet contains many things, and not just all the worldly things, but also the wisdom of Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai. 
it can be found on the internet. As majority of you listeners right now, if this may be your first time hearing the gospel or hearing the truth, where are you hearing it from? On the internet, you know? And like I said, as the scripture even said, wisdom crieth without, she uttereth her voice in the streets. So the prophets, the men of Yahweh Bashem Yahushai that have been set up to be the Lord's mouthpiece, they're set up and they're sent to the streets, man. When you when you read uh, the so-called New Testament scriptures, the Lord Yahweh commanded his disciples, which, which became apostles, right? Which the word apostle means to be sent forth, you know? So where did the Lord Yahweh send his apostles? You know, he said, go out into the highways and to the hedges and bid them to the marriage, loosely paraphrasing, you know, that, that, my, that my house may be filled, you know? That was the... The commission of the Lord Yahweh Shai to his disciples, you know, which, like I said, they became apostles because they were sent forth. They were sent, you know, to the streets to gather the believing Israelites, man. Not all of Israel and not even all of the world, contrary to popular belief, contrary to Christianity and all this false doctrine out here. The Lord Yahweh Shai, he was only sent to the lost sheep of the house of Israel as his own admission, as his own words say, you know. So, we understand the prophets, the men of Yahweh Bashem Yahushua that have this 100% truth. And even, even the men that necessarily don't have the 100% truth that are mimicking the prophets, you know, the false prophets. They may gather in the streets as well. But the point being here is wisdom cries with, within the streets, man. It even says in the New Living Translation, Proverbs 1 and 20, wisdom shouts in the streets. She cries out in the public square. Which, like I said, the chief place of concourse, like for... For example, the, the men of Israel camp that I prophesy with, uh, that I teach with, uh, we, we gather together, we, we go down to downtown, the downtown area. Why? Because especially on the weekends, that's where many people, they're off. They want to relax, go out on a chill spot, you know, take a walk, go to random stores. Guess where they'll go? Downtown, you know, where the you know, chief place of concourse is, where everybody gathers, you know, together, you know. It even says, matter of fact, let's read verse 21 in the uh, NLT, the New Living Translation. Proverbs 1 and 21. She calls to the crowds along the main street to those gathered in front of the city gate, right? Because uh, back in the old world especially, that's that's a, a beautiful way, uh, or should I even say that's more accurately how or where the main chief place of concourse was at the gates of the city, you know, where people were entering and exiting out of the city. You, you encounter a lot of people there, you know, and here in the modern terms, you know, we're not standing outside of, on the boundaries of the state lines, you know, because people are driving. They're not necessarily going to stop in here. But, you know, even if we were to go there, it wouldn't be anything wrong with it. They would still see us whether they stopped or not. The whole point being is we know where the crowds are gathering, where the people can walk up and hear and be edified, you know, and that's in the downtown areas around, you know, major mall outlets, things of that nature where many people gather. As it says in the King James Version, she crieth in the chief, Proverbs 1 and 21, she crieth in the chief place of concourse, in the openings of the gates. In the city, you see that? In the city, she uttereth her words, saying, how long, ye simple ones, will ye love simplicity? And the scorners delight in their scorning, and fools hate knowledge. So we can clearly tell that this is talking about the Israelites, you know, as it refers to them as simple ones. They love simplicity, love to be simple, you know, carnally minded, worldly minded, fleshly minded, lacking the spirit. You know, that's nothing but Israel, especially because the scriptures detail and outline and explain that they are the only ones whom the Holy Spirit was set up for, you know, for them to learn and for them to serve and please their heavenly power, Yahweh. Bahashem Yahweh Shai, you know. Matter of fact, the scriptures even say, what is it, Isaiah chapter 1, that uh, uh, Israel doth not know. Matter of fact, I'm going to pull it up over my phone over here. I'm not going to throw it up on the screen just so we can stay here. Uh, I believe it's Isaiah chapter 1. Let me get it in the King James Version. Yep. Uh, Isaiah chapter 1, and starting at verse 3. It says, matter of fact, starting at verse 2. Matter of fact, I'll read verse 1 for the concept so you know who what people is being referred to. All right, it says, The vision of Isaiah, the son of Amos. Matter of fact, I, I would just throw it up on the screen since I'm going to read like three verses. All right. All right. It says, 
so Isaiah chapter 1 and 1, it says, The vision of Isaiah, the son of Amos, which he saw concerning Judah and Jerusalem, right? So we understand the context. The Israelites, Judah and Jerusalem, both the southern and northern kingdom, all 12 tribes, right? Jumping down to the point. Well, really, I'll, I'll finish. It says, oh, Which he saw concerning Judah and Jerusalem in the days of Uzziah, Jotham, Ahaz, and Hezekiah, kings of Judah. Hear, O heavens, and give ear, O earth. So this is talking about the heads, the leaders of Israel, but also the entire nation. For the Lord, Yahweh, by Hashem Yahweh Shai, has spoken. I have nourished and brought up children, and they have rebelled against me. Right? So we can clearly see, even as we continue on over here in Proverbs, that clearly is talking about the Israelites, those that are simple, those that are scorners. Right? Well, when you get the word scorner, matter of fact, let's grab that real quick. Right, a scorner is Strong's H3887 Lawas Lawas I could be pronouncing that correctly Let me double check for edification's sake uh, La Yeah, Lawas Lawas, right? So we understand that the Israelites as it says, lawas in the Hebrew, that word for scorn and the outline of biblical uses means to scorn, to make mouths at, to talk arrogantly, to boast, to scorn, to mock, to der deride. It's, it also goes into interpret, right? To be inflated, to scoff, act as a scorner, show oneself a mocker. As the strong definition goes into properly to make mouths at, to, to basically speak against, you know, hence, to interpret or intercede, right? Ambassador, having derision, interpret, interpreter, make a mock, a mocker, a scorner, right? And that word derision, look, this is how they describe a scorner. It says the use of ridicule or to scorn to show contempt or unbelief, right? Matter of fact, as it says, derision, the use of ridicule or scorn to show contempt. A state of being laughed at or ridiculed. A state of being derided and an object of ridicule or scorn. So when we come back, we can clearly see that this is talking about the Israelites. Because look, they, they have, according to the Bible, the Israelites have rebelled against the Heavenly Father, which is the author of wisdom, the author uh, of spiritual things. So if they have rejected wisdom and spiritual things, what else left? what else is left for them? Carnality, wickedness, as it even continues and says, Isaiah 1 and 3, the ox knoweth his owner, and the ass his master's crib, right, which are two dumb animals, the ox and the ass. He says, the ox knoweth his owner, and the ass, which is a donkey, his master's crib, he knows where he can go home to, can sleep at night. The ox knows who he serves, but Israel doth not know. My people does not consider. They don't know what the hell is going on. They don't know where their home is. They don't know who their their master is, who they are supposed to serve. They don't know. It says in verse 4, uh, A sinful nation, a people laden with iniquity, a seed of evildoers, children that are corruptors. They have forsaken the Lord, Yahweh Bashem Yahweh They have provoked the Holy One of Israel unto anger. They are gone away backward, you know. And, and the rest of this chapter is edifying. I don't want to make this exhortation too long. So I'll, I'll leave off of, of this chapter right here. But as you see, it's written in the scriptures that Israel, they're wicked. They're evildoers. They're, they're laden up with iniquity, right? Which iniquity is sin on top of sin on top of sin. And what is sin? Transgression of the law. So they're not being obedient to the Heavenly Father. They're not being recipients of wisdom, right? And then instead of realizing that, they just laugh and scorn. No, no we, we're not trying to hear that. We're not trying to do none of that. You tell the Israelite that he got to repent and keep the commandments, stop eating pork, crab, lobster, and shrimp, you know, start acknowledging the Sabbath day, start praying to your whole body, they're not doing that. They're going to laugh at you. We don't know who the hell that is. We ain't doing none of that. I eat what I want to eat. You know, I'll work when I want to work. I'll spend my money when I want to spend my money. You can't tell me to do nothing, nigga. Hey, so guess what? You know, in your eyes, I'll be a nigga, but in the Heavenly Father's eyes, I'll be his, his son. You know, and I'm speaking in a general aspect, not really speaking of myself, but, you know, I brought to Zah, you know, Lord willing, you know, I can be seen as his son, you know, if I continue in the things in which he's given us, which is his wisdom, you know, 
Uh, which let's read this one more time. Proverbs 1 and 22. How long ye simple ones would ye love simplicity? So the Lord is crying out in the streets through his prophets, through his servants, his men that have the 100% truth. Starting with the elders and apostles of great most on on down. The Lord is asking the Israelites, how long is this, is this going to go on? How long are you going to prefer folly? You know, you know, learning how to how to roll up a blunt while you drive a car one handed, you know, learning, learning how to, you know, break a brick down and sell it and, you know, make 10 bands off of it or whatever. You know, like the scriptures even say, um, my people, they are wise to do evil. But to do good, they have no knowledge, you know. So the Lord is asking, how long is this going to go on? It says, how long, you simple ones, will you love simplicity? And the scorners delight in their scorning. And fools hate knowledge. So the Lord calls his own people fools. You know, they don't not only hate knowledge, but they rejected wisdom, you know. It says in Proverbs 1 and 23, turn you at my reproof, right? Which the word reproof goes into correction, you know. The Lord is, is seeking to correct his children in these latter days, but not all of them are going to be corrected. You know, majority of them, even two thirds pursuant to Zechariah 13 are set up to be destroyed because they refuse to hearken unto his words to be corrected and to be received through his mercy. You know, as the Lord is long suffering towards us, not willing that any of us should perish, but that all of us will come to repentance. And, and that's not going to happen. Only the remnants, the elect of the nation of Israel, the chosen are going to turn at the Lord's reproof, hearken unto his wisdom, and be received again. As it says, Behold, I will pour out my spirit unto you. I will make known my words unto you. And how is he doing this? By his servants, the prophets. As the scripture says, Surely the Lord Yahweh will do nothing, but revealeth his secret, his secrets even unto his servants, the prophets. So they are the ones who have the, the words of the Lord, and they're the ones that, are, that have the ability to, to make his words known unto the rest of the nation you know now whether they receive it or not that's not their job you know all their job is is, is to communicate the truth the 100 percent truth you know not you know refraining from anything that the lord has given us to speak everything that the lord has made mention to us we are commanded to teach to the people you know it says in verse 24 proverbs 1 and 24 because i have called and ye refused I have stretched out my hand and no man regarded. Once again, his hand being his servants, the prophets, you know, his his right hand, even as the scripture referred to the Lord's right hand as righteousness. Matter of fact, let, let's let's get this scripture real quick. Uh, no, let me get this. All right. It's a, it's a few places. Hold on. Jeremiah 26 is beautiful. Um, yeah, all, all of this is edifying. It's basically saying the same thing. But look, let's get Jeremiah 7 and 25. Since the day that your fathers came forth out of the land of Egypt unto this day, I have even sent unto you all my servants, the prophets, daily, rising up early and sending them so the lord has never ceased he's never stopped from trying to communicate to his people trying to warn us of the things that are going to come upon us and the rest of the world that's what the word prophet goes back to you know the the men who prophesy right which the word prophesy when it's broken down pro meaning before and facade meaning to say so to say before they they are sent to warn you of the things that the Heavenly Father has put within his purpose and his will to play out in the earth. And as the scripture says, daily rising up early and sending them. You know, at all times of the day, early and late, the Lord has his servants, the prophets, teaching and preaching his 100% truth. You know, as it says in Jeremiah 25 and 4, And the Lord Yahweh by Hashem Yahweh has sent unto you all his servants, the prophets, rising early and sending them, but ye have not hearkened, nor incline your ear to hear. Is this not what we're reading in Proverbs? <laughs> that the Lord has stretched forth his hand and no man is regarding it. The Israelites are refusing to repent and to acknowledge their transgressions. It's all throughout the scriptures, all throughout the prophets. You know, it's been made mention that the Israelites refused to hearken unto the words of their God, Yahweh. 
you know. So, therefore, judgment has to proceed. And when that judgment proceeds, the Lord is not going to be feeling sorry for you. The Lord is not going to be like, oh, I should have gave him one more chance. I should have, I should have did it again. I should have, no, man. Let's read how the Lord says he's going to, you know, look upon his people that, that are truly not his people. Because, you know, the two thirds of Israel, as the scriptures say, all of Israel is not of Israel. The two thirds of Israel are really the enemies of the elect, right? Which the elect are the chosen Israelites, the Israel of Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shai, as the scriptures say. You know, that remnant, that elect, those are the true sons of Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shai. Those are the ones that the Lord is going to deal mercifully with and bountifully with the beautiful salvation. You know, while everybody else is dying of starvation and hunger, they're going to be fed. While everybody else is, is being killed, they're going to be preserved. While everybody else feels that thermonuclear fire, they're going to be delivered, you know. And this is all according to the words of the Lord, you know. As it reads, continuing on, Proverbs 1 and 25, But ye have set at not all my counsel. Right, we tell you that the mark of the beast is, is the RFID C hip, and it's going to be physically implanted within your body. Do not take it. What do you niggas say? Well, shit, let you get hungry enough. You know, you're going you gonna to take it. No, man. You might take it. Speak for your damn self. You know, although the Lord has sent us to warn you guys of even the judgment for receiving that, which is having your part in a lake which burneth with fire and brimstone, pursuant to Revelation chapter 14, we tell you all these things and y'all y'all scoff at it. Y'all 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 mock us. Man, that shit ain't going to happen. You really believe us. You A UFO going to come down here and deliver you from, from the so-called white man? Man, you stupid. You know, this, this is what we hear from you niggas, man. You know, but guess what? When y'all see the so-called UFOs, which are the chariots of Israel, according to the Bible, you know, the, the vehicles that the angels travel to and fro in the earth in, the vehicles that the Lord Yahweh Shai and the host, the armies of heaven, are going to return to the earth in, you know, guess what? They do exist. And when they appear, you niggas, especially you niggas, y'all going to wish that y'all was getting beamed up into them chariots, man. You know? And, and I speak as a man, my, my damn self, being an Israelite, desiring to be of the elect. I want to be a part of the damn chariots, but I'm not going to be like the two thirds that are willfully sending, casting these words behind us and didn't think to still make it on the chariot. No, I, I'm repenting, rehearsing those righteous acts and being obedient to the will of Yahweh Bashim Shai, hoping that, you know, my faith, you know, showing forth through my words. It, it, it puts me back on the right standards with Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai that they, you know, that the Lord, you know, sees fit to have mercy upon me, you know. that That's what an elect, a hopeful elect, is going to be doing in these times now, you know, fulfilling his lot and, and righteousness. It says, but, Proverbs 1 and 25, but ye, majority of you Israelites, but ye have said at not all my counsel and with none of my reproof. It says in the New Living Translation, you ignored my advice and rejected the correction I offered. Y'all didn't want to repent and acknowledge the law, statutes, and commandments. And we're not saying, you know, through the spirit and power of Yahweh by Shemel Shai, we're not saying you got to keep every single individual law in order to be delivered. Because knowing that we're in captivity, is you can't keep every single law to deliver yourself. So what do we have to do? Have faith in the Lord Yahweh Shai's performance of the law. Have faith that his sacrifice is powerful enough to redeem us from all our iniquities, you know, and then rehearse those righteous acts. We still try to keep the laws that we can keep to the best of our ability. It's not hard to put that fucking pork chop down. It's not hard not to go to the store and buy some shrimp on a Sabbath day, especially on the Sabbath day, but even in general, especially to eat it, you know, it's not hard to do the things that, you know, we, we don't have to do. You know, once again, going back to that willful sinning, the majority of you Israelites are comfortably willfully sinning, sinning just for the hell of it. Shit, what, 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 what's going to happen to me? Nothing. Y'all y'all think the Lord done went to sleep? Y'all think the God of the Bible done exist? Y'all think his, his righteousness is not going to proceed forth in the earth as pure judgment? So therefore, when these judgments come, hey, the Lord says he's going to do what? Proverbs 1 and 26. I also will laugh at your calamity. I will mock when your fear cometh. So just like you're laughing at the prophets, you're laughing at the men of the Lord, you're laughing at this gospel, you're laughing at this truth. The Lord's going to look back at you when these judgments are coming and he's going to be laughing through his men, through his prophets, the men that he shows mercy with. While they're dwelling in peace, you're going to be dwelling in torments, as the scriptures say. 
the Lord is going to be mocking you when your fear comes. As it says in the New Living Translation, Proverbs 1 and 26. So I will laugh when you are in trouble. I will mock you when disaster overtakes you. Because why? The Lord prophesied that disaster and trouble was coming. Jeremiah 30 and 7. Uh, Daniel 12 and 1. It prophesies of a time of great evil such as the earth has never seen before upon the Israelites. It cannot compare to the, the, the slave trade, the transatlantic slave trade. It can't compare to the Roman Empire enslaving us. It can't com compare to the Babylonian, the Egyptian. You know, it can't compare to none of those enslavements and none of the oppressions and, and you know, injustices that we've suffered. It's basically all of those combined. You know, the Lord is going to surpass all the evils that he's ever brought upon us to bring about this great calamity, this great time of trouble. You know, only to do what? To leave his sincere, hopeful elect alive and preserved. And it's basically him purging out you wicked Israelites who, who don't desire righteousness. You know, matter of fact, let's, let's grab that in um, the Apocrypha, right? Uh, a second, Esdras. Chapter 9. And I want to get straight to the point. Matter of fact, let's start at verse 7. It says, And everyone that shall be saved and shall be able to escape by his works and by faith, whereby ye have believed, shall be preserved from the said perils, right? Famine, right? Which is lack of bread and water. Uh, pestilence, which is diseases. Uh, the sword, which is military truth. Whether you drafted to World War Three or you got... Uh, civil unrest in the cities, people rioting and looting and, and breaking into homes and killing people and stealing things. Guess what? That's the sword. The Lord prophesied that to come upon Babylon the Great, a.k.a. America as well, and even the rest of the world, wherever you're scattered. The Lord's going to bring a time of trouble upon all of the Israelites, right? And then the ultimate sword, which is that thermonuclear fire. The Lord has pronounced all those perils upon those which have not believed of the nation of Israel, especially you know, because they're the only ones who belief was set up for. To believe in what? The promise that was given to Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Isaiah 45, 17, John 3, 16 goes into the promise, which is what? Deliverance, righteousness, a kingdom. The Lord Yahweh Shai ruling with us and over us forever in peace. You know, we have to trust in those things. And those of us that believe in it by our faith and by our works, they're going to be delivered. Should I say by their faith and their works, they're going to be delivered. You know, and it says second Edges 9 and 8, they shall be preserved from the said perils. Not saying they're not gonna go through them, but they're ultimately gonna be delivered. They're gonna be found in, in peace and life at the end of this. You know, everybody else, they're gonna be destroyed. As it says, and shall see my salvation in my land, the land of Israel, and within my borders, for I have sanctified them for me from the beginning. That's the elect, the chosen. From the foundation of the world. That's why the Lord Yahweh Shai died. To show them mercy. And even, you know, just to throw that out there too. You know, because this is the 100% truth. The two thirds that are destroyed on this side. Y'all are going to come back in the kingdom as well. But you're going to go through these torments first, man. You're going to feel that fire, man. Which is something you don't ever want to be a part of. But because of your own rebelliousness and, and hatred towards the Lord. He's going to make sure you go through that fire. You know. It says, 2nd Ezra's chapter 9 and 9 it says then shall they be in pitiful case who the the, the two-thirds the majority of you black Spanish Native American Indians who hate this gospel it says then shall they be in pitiful case which now have abused my ways and they that have cast them away despitefully shall dwell in torments the Lord is gonna have you dwell in these torments man until he's satisfied which that's talking about all the hell you're going to catch even before the fire. The fire is just the cherry on top, man. You know, the Lord is going to make sure that y'all y'all suffer, not just are punished for your sins, but that you suffer for your sins. Because when the Lord opened up grace and mercy unto you, you abused it. You used it, you know, for, for vanity and for, for adding more sin on top of sin, you know, to become a tenfold child of hell, man. You know, the Lord sent us over to America to, to repent and seek him to be given our kingdom. But we turn it into, and when I say we, I'm talking about the entire nation in general. We turn it into, you know, a, a fucking celebration inside of a tomb, man. A, a party inside of a casket. You know, because this is certain death, believe it or not. America has been set up 
for a certain death for all that live here for all that you know come here guess what the lord has set america up to be destroyed so if you find yourself within its borders leading up into that destruction you're gonna feel you know the those torments leading up to that great final destruction which is that thermonuclear fire you know and, and look those of us that are living here now we can attest we can tell you man it is hell living here man you know the things that you're suffered to to be around the things that you're suffered to hear the things that you're suffered to do amongst these, these heathen man hey we gotta get the hell up out of here man and I, I speak as the hopefully let man we gotta get the hell up out of here man the scriptures even say that the days except the days be shortened there should no flesh be saved but for the elect's sake the days are shortened so if the lord didn't even speed time up guess what <laughs> we would all be put to death man some way form or fashion but because the lord has mercy towards us you know chiefly in regards to the elect guess what the lord is going to make sure that they are delivered but the rest of the people even of the two-thirds of israel they are going to dwell in torments ultimately leading to that great final destruction that thermonuclear fire it says in verse 10 second verses 9 and 10 for such as in their life have received benefits and have not known me you know it says and they that have loathed my law while they had yet liberty and when as yet place of repentance was open unto them understood not but despised it that goes back to the scoffers you know the the scorners those that mock and laugh and cast these words behind behind them loathing the law hating the ways of righteousness i'm not wearing no fringes you know i'm not saying i'm above other people that that god made i'm not praying to no name you how about shimmy on shy right all of those that have loathed the lord's law guess what they're gonna be the ones that dwell in these torments you know and even goes into such have received benefits y'all think that 401k y'all thought the stimulus checks y'all thought um welfare and all these other uh should i say tools that esau edom gives you as benefits was going to deliver you from the lord's judgment guess what no the lord's judgment is still gonna stand you know and ultimately you know those gifts as the scriptures say a gift destroyed the heart ultimately those gifts destroyed your mind you didn't look for true deliverance because he thought that that was your deliverance he thought esau edom you know healed that wound that great transgression he caused against the israelites you thought it was healed by by a little stimulus check or by the beetlejuice the squid games he's giving you that saying if you take this you know you're gonna be healed from all these diseases out here no man he's ultimately even gonna tell you that taking that rfid c hit that's gonna deliver you from the lord's judgment and in reality he's sealing your fate man you're ultimately gonna be destroyed you know and as the scripture said second Ezra 9 and 11 and they that have loathed my law which goes into a strong dislike or even leading to hatred it says while they had yet liberty and, and and it says and when as yet place of repentance was open unto them which is how we know it's talking about the israelites repentance you know was only given to israel pursuant to Acts chapter 5 by the slaying of the lord yahweh you know it says yet yeah, and when as yet the place of repentance was open unto them understood not but despised it the same must know it after death by pain so the law that you cast it behind you you're still gonna have to keep it you know the lord's never changing but now you have to die first you gotta be put to death and a painful death at that you're not just gonna die in your sleep you're not just gonna go to sleep and then die and then when you wake up you're in the kingdom no the lord's gonna make sure you suffer you know that you're, that you're tortured that's where it, that's what you get from torments man the lord knows how to torture you mentally physically emotionally you know he's gonna make sure that you know you have no way of escape you know and then then he's gonna put you through those various you know apparitions as the book of Ezra goes into the various creatures that the lord got set up out here to torment you you know to, to hurt your flesh and to ultimately kill you the Lord got, uh, hey, the Lord is not slack when it comes to judgments, man. And neither is his mind limited in regards to creating something to fuck with you, man. You know, it says, 2 Ezra 9 and 13. And therefore, be thou not curious how the ungodly shall be punished. And when, because it's surely going to happen. But inquire how the righteous shall be saved. Whose the world is and for whom the world is created. So, 
We know that the wicked are going to be destroyed, but that's not going to profit you. What is going to profit you is understanding how the righteous are going to be delivered. Learn and study those ways. See what they did. You know, see if it can benefit you. You know, Lord willing, if you're an Israelite, you know, it's basically the way of repentance. Acknowledging your transgression, confessing it, you know, to the to the name of Yahweh Bashim Yahshai, which is our God. You know, and then seeking to please him. Do the things that he's commanded us to do. You know, being the Israelites. Right? It says, continuing on, Proverbs 1 and 27. When your fear cometh as a desolation, right? The things that we've spoken that are going to come upon you, famine, pestilence, diseases, and death. You know, when your fear comes as desolation and your destruction cometh as a whirlwind, when distress and anguish cometh upon you, the, the prophets, the men of Yahweh, Bashim and they're going to be laughing. They're going to be mocking you just as you are mocking us in these times, you know? They're going to be mocking you saying, guess what? This is the biggest I told you so in history, you know? When these judgments come, they're probably, hey, we're going to be saying, damn, look, we told them, Lord, you know, Lord, we, we, we did what you said. Hey, it's time for you to work, you know? And when them works come, when them judgments come, the prophets, the men of the Lord, they're going to be praising the Lord. And while y'all out there screaming, cursing the Lord out, you know, guess what? They're going to be in peace. You're going to be in torments. It says in verse 28, then shall they call upon me, but I will not answer. The Lord don't give a damn. You know, it says, they shall seek me early, but they shall not find me. Y'all even going to be looking for the men of the Lord. Y'all going to be trying to search up on the internet. Wait, what was their camp name? What was that video called? Y'all not going to find it. Y'all going to be trying to go, well, I remember they was downtown. Let me go down to where they was teaching. Y'all not going to find us. We're not going to be there. The scriptures say the Lord is going to, you know, uh, shut up the lips of, lips of his prophets. And basically that we're not going to speak anymore. You know, we're just going to, it's going to be the time where the elect have already been sealed. And then the judgments is going to start rolling forth. It says, Proverbs 1 and 29, For that they hated knowledge and did not choose the fear of Yahweh Bashim Yahweh they would none of my counsel. They despised all my reproof. Therefore shall they eat of the fruit of their own way and be filled with their own devices. So the Lord is making sure, look, all those things that you trusted in, go, go back to them. You know, see if they can deliver you. And guess what? What you're ultimately going to see is they can't deliver you and they're going to be destroyed right along with you. Wh whoever it may be or whatever it may be. You know, nothing can escape the judgments of Yahweh Bashim Shai. Even the scriptures say, you know, Lucy paraphrasing the Lord, were you mad at the waters? <laughs> Even the ocean going to feel that fire when the, when the judgment comes. You know, when that thermonuclear fire comes. You know, the, the scriptures say, Lord, were you mad at the waters? You know, so... You can only imagine how much more the people were destroyed if, if the elements even got to feel it. You know, that's tough. It says, Proverbs 1 and 32, For the turning away of the simple shall slay them, right? Because ultimately this truth is, is, is simple, so to speak, man. It's, it's a simple truth. You know, fear the Lord, obey his commandments. Yet still, because it's a spiritual thing, the Lord is not giving it to everyone, only those whom he has chosen. And a lot of y'all might find fault with that. Y'all might try to find fault, should I say. Well, why is, why is the Lord mad at us if, if he the one that's choosing who he saves and who he doesn't save? Hey, that's that's a, a wicked statement, man, because, you know, who are you to, to, like the Apostle Paul said, who are you to reply against the Lord saying, why hast thou made me thus? The Lord made you because he wanted to make you. You know, this is all for his purpose, his will. He set up those who he wanted to, to glorify and magnify in his name by his power. And he set up those who he wanted to destroy and bring down low and enslave and even put to death by the glory of his power. That's his will. This is his movie. You know, we are his creation, you know, and therefore he can do with us as he pleases. We are just, you know, the ones who he chose, the Israelites, to be his vessels of mercy in which he deals with us. You know, on a different level, higher than you, higher than you others, man. Even as Deuteronomy 7 and 6 says, you know. But as it says, Proverbs 1 and 32, For the turning away of the simple shall slay them, and the prosperity of fools shall destroy them. Because a lot of y'all are deceived by the way America looks right now. Y'all think America is thriving, that this is the promised land, the land of milk and honey. Look at the technology. Look at the schools. Look at look at the the um look at the military, you know? Who who is like this nation, this people? And that, that ultimately has deceived you, man. You know? It even says, uh uh well as it says again, 
the prosperity of fools shall destroy them, right? Because America, they can't even, the Americans, the Edomites, the so-called white men, women, and children, they can't even deliver themselves from the Lord's judgment. But they're going to tell you, no, follow us. We can all, we can fight back against this heavenly power. You know, just receive this haragma, this mark, you know, pursuing the Revelation 13, you know, verse 16 on down. Or take this, you know, bow down to me. And, and guess what? With me, you will have everlasting life. With me, you will live forever. By me, you will never want for a thing in your life ever again. You know, that's the deceit, man. And and you're truly a fool for trusting in that fool. Because even that fool himself, referring to the elites of the Edomites, they know good and damn well the power in which they serve on the left-hand side, the spiritual demon Satan. They know good and well that Satan is not more powerful than, than the Lord's righteousness, man. For Satan himself is, is a servant of the Lord, man. And Satan does the bidding of the Lord on the left-hand side, which is wickedness. And according to the prophecies, even the Edomites know, guess what? That righteousness is going to come to the earth, and that's going to be the end of their kingdom. It's going to be the end of their rulership. So by you trusting in them, deceiving you, not only are they going to be destroyed, but because you are joined with them, you have to be destroyed as well. And the scriptures even say that, right? Let's grab that. All right, um, Proverbs 11 and 21. Though hand joined in hand, right, the Israelites have found themselves joining with the hands of the Edomites, pursuant to Malachi 1 and 4. We know that the Edomites are known as the border of wickedness. It says, though hand joined in hand, the wicked shall not be unpunished, but the seed of the righteous shall be delivered, right? So we understand, guess what? Although you join in hands with them, they're still not going to go unpunished, which means what? You're also going to be punished right along with them for your trusting in their wickedness. It says in Proverbs 1 and 33, but whoso hearkeneth unto me shall dwell safely. As we just read, even the righteous, they're going to receive mercy from the Lord, right? Whoso hearkeneth unto me shall dwell safely and shall be quiet from fear of evil. So we understand we don't have to fear these judgments that are coming to the wicked because we're doing what pleases the Lord. We're doing what he commanded us to do. So, so therefore, we're going to take part. You know, I'm speaking in general, but I brought this out still, Lord willing, I'll be a part of that. You know, we're going to be the ones who the Lord does mercifully with and gives salvation to, you know, for our obedience and for our faith, which is going to have fruits through our works, man. By the things we're doing, the things we're speaking, you know, we're going to be the ones that the Lord sees fit to, you know, deliver by his son, our Lord, Yahweh Shai. You know, which is going to happen simultaneously as you, as America is being pelted with thermonuclear missiles. The Lord Yahweh Shah is going to be beaming up his elect to deliver them, you know. But with that, you know, I'm going to wrap it up with that. I don't want to make this too much longer. Abaratazah, Lord willing, this is edifying to the sincere, hopeful elect of the nation of Israel. I want to um, give double honors to the elder and apostles of Great Millstone, of whom I learned this 100% truth and who rule very well and oversees the tabernacle of David. Shout out to the head of the men of Israel camp, the Ak Kazakh, whom I teach under here in Greenville, South Carolina. And finally, another shout out to Akyom and Akwath, which is Hebrew for you, brethren and sisters, who are diligently and sincerely working out your faith in these last days with fear and trembling towards your salvation. All right, so y'all, I say Shalom, and I'll end it by giving all praise, honor, and glory to Yahweh, Bahasham, Yahweh Shai, Bahasham, Rachah, Kodash, Wa'abad, Rabah, Death to America.